everyone, it's me again Shikin. Welcome back to episode 9 of Mud Crab Show. For those who haven't watched the previous episode, you can find the link at the description. In this episode, we will be discussing the challenge in Mud Crab Farm. Mud Crab price has increased by at least 10% from 2018 due to increased demand and lack of supply. Pig price can reach up to USD 30 per kilo, enticing many to invest in the mud crab business. Despite the high price, investors are still struggling to attain profitability due to challenge faced. In this episode, we will talk about potential challenges that need attention before you invest in the business. The mud crab farming is not as developed as the shrimp industry. Having a mud crab farm might sound awesome, but as this industry is considered as new, there is a lack of knowledge and experienced farmer available. The local farmer might have vast experience catching the mud crab from the wild. However, culturing the mud crab should be done with operational knowledge and experience. There are also many studies has been conducted focusing on the mud crab. However, the application to improve the mud crab industry are less known. This industry is still considered a developing field. It is considered an incomplete ecosystem for the aquaculture as there is no feed meal for crab. Farm operators who work with mud crab often provide the feed to mimic the mud crab natural feeding. Common types of feed in mud crab aquaculture are trash fish, formulated feed, shellfish, squid and natural feed. In aquaculture, feed costs typically account for 50 to 60 percent of operating costs. Hence, it is important to ensure that you pick the optimal feed that fits your business goal. Typical considerations include availability costs and performance. Many researchers are also looking into other alternative protein sources that could potentially improve the growth of microbes. Mud crab farming has been adopted by many countries. Apart from Indonesia, Thailand and Philippines, Vietnam remains one of the top exporters for mud crab in the Southeast Asian region. These big importers of the crab include but not limited to China, Hong Kong and Singapore. Contrary to popular belief, the mud crab hatchery technology has been around for a decade with the earliest record of successful hatching operation in 1997. Nevertheless, there have been massive improvements since then. At the moment, hatcheries can produce all four species of mud crab, Saila serata, Saila paramemose, Saila transcubarica and Saila olivacea. However, it is common for hatcheries to focus on the effort in producing Saila serata species for grow out purpose. In Vietnam, where Saila serata is not native to the local region, hatcheries prefer the production of Saila paramemose. Mud crab hatcheries are usually located in regions where crablets are in high demand. These include countries like Vietnam and the Philippines. A huge amount of crablets are exported to foreign countries. The seedlings that are commonly used at the moment for grow out are harvested directly from the wild using scoop or scissor snack. However, the demand for getting the seedling is challenged by the low availability of wild seedling from June to October due to the monsoon season. Apart from Vietnam, where nursery operators can be found, this is not common for Philippines and Malaysia. Almost all crab aquaculture production relies on wild caught stock, while lava rearing has not yet reached a commercially viable level for stocking into the aquaculture farm. The next challenge is the extremely low stocking density for mud crab culture. The crab are usually stocked in low densities of 1,000 to 2,000 crab per hectare to avoid cannibalism. Mud crab are known for their aggressiveness contributing to their cannibalistic behavior. When overcrowded, mud crab would cannibalize each other resulting in high mortality. Mortality can reach up to 50 to 75% to 
resulting in substantial financial loss. To reduce cannibalism, farm operator would reduce the stocking density to 1 to 1.5 meters square per track. This reduces crop yield and erodes the profitability of farm with a high land cost. Instead of mud pond, some operators prefer to culture the crab in mangrove pens. These mangrove pens are made of bamboo or mesh green netting to prevent the crab from escaping from the pens. Some farm operators place used tires or coconut leaf that provide hiding spot for mud crab. Mud crab farming can be done in any environment such as pond, mangrove pens or rust. Each environment can have its pro and con. As for us, the challenge is when we need high maintenance for the operation instruments. You might already familiar with what are the instruments involved when doing the rust from the previous episode. To ensure the efficiency of the filtration and solid removal process, maintenance should be done accordingly to avoid further damage. Thus, stable financial should be an advantage. You will need to ensure a good rollover of your business. The concept is the same as how you maintain your car or your motorcycle. You need to service your vehicle according to the schedule. We have reached the end of the episode. To recap, in this episode, we already discussed the challenge in mud crab farming, which are the new industry, incomplete ecosystem, lack of hatcheries, low stocking density and high maintenance for rust. In the next episode, we will share with you on the unique strategy advantages. Don't forget to subscribe to get a notification on the next episode. If you have any question, do drop it at the comment section as we will do a Q&A session at the end of the series.